This morning we find Jesus praying over his disciples. It's on a long Thursday evening that will lead into Good Friday. He is well attuned in this moment to the anxiety that they must be feeling about their future. And in this passage in John, he spends a lot of energy just assuring them, I have been with you this whole time. I'm never going to leave you. I'm not going away. But, he says, it is going to look different. The Holy Spirit will come, he says. It will run alongside you, he says. It will guide and direct your path. You will be advocated for. And, he says, if you know this Spirit, then you will know Him. Recognize its presence, and you will know that He, too, dwells and abides with us. And if you know Him, then you know the Father. For He dwells and abides in the Father, and the Father in Him. And they are one together at home with the Spirit. The urgency of it, the simplicity. I used to think that the Gospel of John was full of complicated poetry and theological puzzles that I had to solve. Lately, I've been reading it differently. And it seems now that to this reader, a lot of the Gospel of John is just Jesus trying to say things as plainly as he can and being misunderstood and mislabeled by just about everyone that he talks to. He's taken too superficially or in too black and white of a way, or people only want to understand him in a strictly legalistic framework, or in a framework of what can this guy do for me, or, and there's a lot of this, some don't know how to take him because, frankly, they just don't believe him. The scribes and the Pharisees, yes, but also sometimes his closest, most well-intentioned followers just don't know what to do with Jesus. They still want proofs, even at that late hour on a Thursday night. Philip asks Jesus, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus responds, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? It recalls the words of Jesus to the disciples he encountered on the road to Emmaus. How foolish you are and how slow of heart. In the Gospel of John, Jesus drops a thousand breadcrumbs and they all lead to the spirit-facilitated understanding that he is who he claims to be. I am the bread of life, he says. I am the light of the world. I'm the door of the sheep. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. And we can choose this or we can reject it. But even if we reject it completely, it will never mean that Jesus has not already chosen us forever, for he has. What you elect to believe or decide to throw away won't make God love you any more or less than God already loves you, which is total. We'd like to dress it up, make it dance, but I think it at heart no more complicated than that. So hear the simplicity. See the urgency. Jesus has shown us his very self, 
and told us who he is. He has swallowed up death and lives resurrected before us. He is the love and mercy and complete self-offering of God. And I don't mean the token or the emblem, the real thing. He's not asking you for anything you are incapable of doing. He's simply asking you to weigh whether what he says about himself is trustworthy. Whoever believes in him, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. It may seem a tad heretical, but it is even so basic that at ground level, this kind of belief requires no specific religious performance whatsoever. No recitation of creeds or memorization of long prayers, no candle, no table, no book, no enrollment, no participation, no passing of plate or peace. But we who confess him, sooner or later, will be cut to the heart. We will be emboldened by our compassion for one another. We will have mercy on ourselves as God has had mercy on us, and our desire to be like Jesus will come to the fore. And then we will long to enact those same signs, to speak and to sing those creeds, to gather around a table, to hear the generous word broken open. We will set up temples and study his word and acclaim his name. We will attend to old rituals and pass the stories along to our children, not because we have to, but because we want to, because we get to. We will want to build holy community and support one another in love and in charity because we will come to see with profound gratitude that Jesus is true to his word and he is who he says he is and that that can be trusted. So it all comes down to how you choose to grapple with this man. For my part, I do choose to believe roughly, imperfectly, partially. My belief is not done. I'm not a robot. In many ways, I am and I will always be a seeker. And I believe that God loves that about us. But especially on those clearer days, with heart and voice, I do acknowledge and I am convicted and convinced Jesus is Lord and see the difference that it has made. Amen.